Leonardo da Vinci lived hundreds of years ago. He was an incredible inventor, and amongst other things, he invented flying machines, of which he drew many designs. He made some models of some, but as far as we know, none of them ever flew. They were just incredible flying machines that never actually got into the air, rather like flying saucers. Or is that right? You see, you can get flying saucers into the air. You can make them yourself, and you can fly them, like this one. Here we go. And it zooms off at great speed. Well, that's very easy to make, in fact. All you need is a flying saucer out of cardboard and a rubber band and peg launcher. And here's how you begin. First of all, with a flying saucer. Get a bit of old uh, cardboard cut, and that's quite stout, but it, uh, it flies very well. Cut some little squares, big enough to put a 20 cent piece on. And if you want to, you can draw around that to give yourself a guiding line. But if you're really pretty confident of not letting it move, just hold it in place, get your scissors, and snip around the edge. And if you do that carefully and you don't let the coin move, you'll end up with 20 cent pieces of cardboard. That's all you need for the flying saucer. You need to doctor it, though. You need to take a bite like this, like a piece of cake out of the side. That's your finished flying saucer. Make a pile of those and put them to one side. For the launcher, the best thing to get is one of these plastic pegs that has a hole in each handle. You can often buy them like that, and that's the, the best kind to get. And to go with it, you need a rubber band, which is this sort of thin sort of rubber band, otherwise it's too strong, and unstretched, it ought to be just about the length of the peg. That ought to work pretty well. Right, what you do then is to crumple up the rubber band and feed it through both the holes in the handle. Here we go. Sometimes it's a bit fiddly, fiddly to do this, but you can poke it through with a thin stick or a wire, or by cheating, push the handles apart. But as long as you can get that rubber band through both those holes, you're going to be in business. There it is, across both those holes. Now, tether one end and bring the other one down, put it into the jaws of the pig, on the same side as the hole it's going through. Do the same on the other, don't let it go or else you have to start again. And if you do that, you'll have that arrangement. Rubber band through the holes in the handle and each side, each end of the rubber band down over the jaws of the pig. Squeeze the handle and you notice it pings back to the spring. And that's about it, really. All you have to do then is to go back to the handle and pull one of those bits of rubber band out to the side. Tease it out so it really is uh, able to pull out quite a long way without breaking the rubber band. OK, let's turn it around and see what I'm going to see. That's the bit we put in the flying saucer. So we put the flying saucer into the jaws as hard up to the hinge as I can go, leave the notch on the same side as this bit of rubber band, put the rubber band into the notch, there we are, and the thing is cocked and loaded. Don't fire it like that, turn it around with the handles pointing away from me. You'll see what happens as I squeeze those handles, it's going to release the flying saucer, this bit of rubber band hooked into the notch will pull it, and it shoots out towards you with a great amount of spin, like this. And off it goes. If you can't get that sort of peg, you can easily make it. A plastic peg with solid handles can easily have holes drilled through them with a hot wire. Or, if you're desperate, get yourself a wooden peg and cut notches in the handles. You can feed the rubber band through in that way, pull it out carefully to one side, and you can load it up as before. And if you do that, you'll find you've got flying saucers that Leonardo would have been proud of.